Broadcasting from our studios in the UK. Heard around the world. Automatic musical instruments. On app, on Alexa speakers and online. Tuesday Night Live. With James Dundon. Hey, good evening. Welcome to another Tuesday Night Live. Here we are on the 14th of May. If you're a fan of our Fairground Sound show that we do at 6pm every night, without doubt the most popular show on the station, both for live listeners and those tuning in for Listen Again. So if you're a fan of Fairground Sounds, a bit of a treat for you tonight because we've got loads of rally scene instruments and lots of steamy sounds as we bring you a, a celebration of a great Cornish inventor, Richard Trevithick. He built his uh, first ever steam locomotive and changed the world forever. Road locomotive transport we owe to him. And it was Trevithick Day just a couple of weeks ago in Camborne, the 40th event held in his name. Hear all about the replica engine that was built. And we'll also uh, on the show tonight meet the 26 year old who's followed in Trevithick's footsteps to research about his history. I've also, of course, got plenty of organs that have been at Trevithick Day celebrations in Cornwall through the years. So a steamy special on the show. None of the instruments more missed than the Jonas Gavioli. How they used to fit the giant Arctic lorry in the street. I I mean, the, the road was closed, but I mean, it was just standing room only by the time the lorry cut off Bassett Street corner. And what an impressive sound it was as well. Here is the ex-Jonas Gavioli recorded in the time of the ownership of Bill and Carol Jonas in Weybridge playing I Miss My Swiss.
I Miss My Swiss, the ex Jonas Gavioli recorded back in the early 90s by PM Sound. Uh, we thank Paul Martin and family for donating the recordings to Mechanical Music Radio. And it's lovely to hear that instrument in such fine voice. Of course, a trivithic day regular. And we celebrate the great Cornish inventor on Tuesday Night Live tonight. We'll come on to that uh, a little bit later on with many more instruments from that celebratory day that is hosted in his name every year. First, though, we bring to you on Tuesday Night Live news from a world of mechanical music. Yes, it's the only news that matters. Uh, Bits and pieces, what's going on then? The Mechanical Music Factory, of course, at Tone Has Been and co, the Netherlands Book Orgel Centrum, run that, and they have just had their punching machine blades sharpened. A new cobalt punch plate, very, very sort of hard metal. Um, It's now cutting books nice and sharp, and the order line is open again, and they wish to thank gratitude of Tony Decat for the craftsmanship provided. So they've got a cobalt punch plate now, uh, and it's back bonking out the music as quick as you like. Uh, you can find out more. Just search online for Mechanical Music Factory. Another sharp idea is doing a publicity stunt to promote your event, and it was a great success for the Shrewsbury Organ Festival that happened a couple of weekends ago, and organiser Nick Williams turned heads. He certainly threw himself into the spirit of the event by running the 5K Park Run while hand-turning his organ. So he was running along, pushing the organ while turning it, running, literally running. I can't, you're, I'm not joking here. Have a listen. <laughs> you, can hear the, you can hear the footsteps pounding the concrete and there's Nick running along. Um, how he did that, I don't know, it's a bit like uh, rubbing your head and patting your tummy at the same time, but he did manage to do it without going flat on his face, for which we're very grateful. Uh, Congratulations to Nick and everyone involved in the Shrewsbury Organ Festival. Some nice pictures online on groups like Mechanical Music Chat. And the final bit of news from the world of mechanical music for Tulip Park has come to a close. The Kugenhof, which of course runs every spring has just shut its gates after a 53-day run, and there is a resident street organ that plays on site, manned by Sheward Caspers. Uh, The Adrian was there playing seven days a week for 53 days straight, from nine in the morning till six in the evening. Some evenings they didn't stop till 7pm. So a full nine or ten hour day with the organ playing non-stop, uh, the Kugenhof's uh, been going for 75 years, and it was 35 years ago that the Adrian uh, first began going. So quite a milestone for them. There were almost 1.5 million visitors to the park over 53 days. Quite an advert for mechanical music, I'm sure you'll agree. Congratulations to Sherd and all the others who worked so hard to keep the organ playing during that period. You can see pictures online, like them on social media. Search for De Adrian, the street organ. And here it is playing now. We'll play a track from Adrian, if it's not worn out. <laughs> Victory playing it.
Street Organ to Adrian. Uh, sure, Caspers has just played that Street Organ six days a week, uh, nine or ten hours a day, 53 days in a row. The only reason that Sherd had Sundays off is because he had to go and open the, um, the Harlem Dry Organ Museum. So he didn't exactly, have, you know, put his feet up at home. So it's quite, a, quite an effort. Congratulations, Sherd, and all helpers who helped him along. I asked on our social media, and you can join the discussion on the Mechanical Music Radio Facebook page, which organ would you be happy to play for 53 days in a row? Ashley uh, Liversridge says, I would listen to the ex-broad merengue or to cap organ. Metropole. I mean, Metropole's got a, a wheel of music, at least, so you, you didn't have to man it. Amanda Liberty says, I play my hand-turned street organ every day. It's very rare if I don't crank it, but I don't play for eight hours a day. My neighbours would want a word. <laughs> and Bill Hall has commented on there saying, the Andreas Roof fairground organ. Of course, he's new, the new owner of the instrument, which was exported to the US within the last few weeks. Bill, congratulations on your acquisition. Uh, join in on the Tuesday Talking Point on social media. Which organ would you be happy to play for 53 days in a row? Right, let's get on with tonight's fun and game, shall us? Four songs. But what's the connection? Mechanical Music Radio's Connect Four. Nice, easy Connect Four tonight. We're going to play four tracks back to back, and you've got to tell us what connects them. So when you think you've worked it out, get in touch on the website, mechanicalmusicradio.com. Click contact. You can text, WhatsApp, or email us. All the details on there. Let's start with a tune called Europapa, and this is played on Hido Vanos's 40 Key Street Organ. songs but what's the connection mechanical music radios connect four Thank you. 
I wonder if you've already got tonight's Connect Four. It's not a difficult one. Think literally with this one. Track one was Euro Papa. Track two was Puppet on a String. And track three is going to be Knock Knock Who's There. And when you think you worked out tonight's Connect Four, do get in touch on the website mechanicalmusicradio.com and this is the number to put into your contacts if you want to text or WhatsApp the show. We're live right the way through till 10 o'clock and the number for texts and WhatsApps 07871 521 Let's crack on with track three then. Knock knock who's there? songs but what's the connection mechanical music radios connect four was tonight's Connect Four, instruments of varying size and styles. It was a nice mixed job tonight. We did 
are the tracks Euro Papa, Puppet on a String, Knock Knock Who's There and Waterloo. Hope you enjoy the selection of music tonight. There's a certain theme that's running through the music. I wonder if you've worked out the Connect Four. If you have, get in touch now. Text the studio now. 07871 221 511 or email through our website mechanicalmusicradio.com The sound of a dance organ Only much smaller than you'd expect Thanks to a new partnership the NBC in the Netherlands are now building the NBC Decap Orchestrian The full 105 and 121 key Decap sound but in a very small size Measuring at just 2 metres long by 160 centimetres high, it's the perfect size for any house, garage, cafe or bar. All at a very affordable price, built to your specifications within four months and shipping worldwide. The new NBC Decap Orchestrian. Visit orgleweb.com or search NBC on Facebook. James Dundon's Tuesday Night Live. Music Radio.
Uh, tonight we celebrate Trevithick Day and the great Cornish inventor on the show will come on to some interviews that we gathered at the celebrations a couple of weeks back, a little bit later on in the show. Uh, but there are two organs, no strangers to the celebrations in Camborne, the Anderton and Roland Grand Organ, and before that, a 56 keyless leech instrument owned by Ian Rogers. Awesome splendour, we did March of the Cobblers. Right, let's get into your answers for tonight's Connect Four. Four songs. But what's the connection? Mechanical Music Radio's Connect Four. The four tracks we played tonight were Waterloo, Knock Knock Who's There, Puppet on a String and Euro Papa. And I wonder if you got tonight's Connect Four. Should we have a little look through and see some of the bits and pieces? See, Craig from Somerset got it and then he changed his mind. He said, no, no, it must be Pinocchio because we played Puppet on the String and Knock Knock Who's There and... Waterloo. I've no idea about Waterloo, but thank you, Craig. A uh, hi to Cameron and Martin Lodes. Also, Rich Lavangi, who's listening in the US. Um, several people getting it right there. Let's go to fastest finger first. Peter Mackett was first place tonight, followed closely by Andrew Rota, second, and Keith Pinner was third with the correct answer. Talking of which, Keith's sister, Diana who I kept calling Di, and I was told off by Keith when uh, he saw me at the Moose AGM. I, I, I know a, a Diana, and I abbreviate her to Di, so that's my excuse, but apparently it's Diana, so thank, thank you, Diana. I, I'll, I will change that. Mark and William Raven also with a correct answer. Hi to Carol and Chris Hall. Bill Warder says, too easy. Oh, right, is it? Yes. Paul Rogers, also in with a correct answer. Hi to Ben Jackson. Also a message from Cameron Lodes. Oh, and Martin, yes, we mentioned them a minute ago. That's super. Also hi to Ashley Liversridge, who came in with a correct answer. So the tracks we played on Connect Four tonight, we did Waterloo, Knock Knock, Puppet on a String, and Euro Papa. They are all Eurovision Song Contest songs. In the case of the first one we played, Euro Papa... That was the Dutch entry for this year, which was done, was arranged for Dutch Street Organ. They usually do an arrangement of their Eurovision hit. Of course, it never made the grand final because the singer, Joost Klein, was withdrawn from the competition due to some sort of... Uh, well, we're not quite sure what happened backstage, but uh, they said it would not be appropriate for him to continue in the contest. And uh, there's various stories online that you can read about that. But yeah, no, I quite liked it. It was a song, Euro Papa, Puppet on a String, Knock Knock Who's There, and Waterloo. They are all Eurovision hits. Well done if you got tonight's Connect Four. Stumbling on the ex-broad Merengue now with the Sleeman family in Cornwall. And the show tonight, unapologetically, has a bit of a Cornish organs theme. These are all instruments that have attended Trevithick Day 
in Camborne over the last 40 years because we every year celebrate a Cornish inventor called Richard Trevithick, who without doubt changed the world. It was thanks to his invention uh, that so much change came about because he built the first ever steam locomotive. A replica of that particular engine has been built. I caught up with, at Trevithick Day, Colin French, who's the custodian of the Trevithick replica Puffing Devil, and he described to us the scene. The answer is that the modern world began on Christmas Eve 1801 when Richard Trevithick drove his high-pressure steam engine up Camborne Hill. Yes, yeah. And that was the true beginning of motorised transport. And it's about to go, you can hear the valve coming out, so just to describe to us what's happening here. Well, there's um, three people, two, one steering, one driving and one on, on the rear, dressed up in costume in... Um, now they're whizzing along the road, probably about 15 miles an hour, disappearing into the distance. You can probably hear the, the uh, steam whistle going. And there's um, a massive white smoke coming out, white steam coming out of the top of the boiler, which um, is in the song going up Camborne Hill. It says, white stocking she wore. Yeah. That, we think, is what that refers to. Oh, the white smoke, of course. Which, as you can see, does look like stockings when it plumes up from the top of the boiler. Yeah, uh, no, I can see that, because it is. The smoke goes straight up, presumably, because of what a high pressure is coming out of it. Yeah, well, it runs about 75 pounds per square inch of pressure. Um, and this replica is the replica of the very first high-pressure steam engine. Um, How did they manage to build such a good replica? And, and they, Were there uh, documents that were found of, of Trevithick? His son did some what they call arrangement drawings of it, um, which he published, which showed what it looked like in plan form from the side. Yeah. Um, there's also preserved in the Science Museum uh, one of his original, original engines, which we got the finer detail from. And um, based on those drawings and design, we were able to build this replica using the same techniques that they would have used all those two centuries ago. And that is a site, it's uh, coming back to us now, and we're just going to step out to the road just to capture the sound of the replica Trevithick engine coming back down through Bassett Road, the three gentlemen in costume. I mean, it's you've never seen anything like it. I mean, if there were no cars parked on the side of the street here, you, you, you could be in another era, because I'm sure some of the buildings would have been the same, all these terraced houses uh, back in that day with Camborne architecture and here comes a replica engine all three of them holding on tight navigating their way down through the street and you can hear the steam and he comes to a halt a magnificent sight, Colin. I mean, we see it every year, but, you know, it brings a tear to the eye seeing it go down through the street, really, doesn't it? It does. And be before we did, I built this engine, there was nobody alive who actually knew what a terrific engine sounded like. Yeah. The custodian of the very realistic, very accurate, accurate replica that they built of the Trevithick Puffing Devil engine, and uh, there he is talking to us, about it at Mechanical Music Radio. So, um, in honour of Richard Trevithick, there was a certain song that was composed locally many years ago, going up Camborne Hill, coming down, otherwise known as the Trevithick Day March, and it has been done for the organs. Here it is on the ex Jonas Gavioli.
the ex Jonas Gavioli, the Trevithic Day March. Stay tuned for a few more Cornish organs from this particular event. We're also speaking to a 26 year old who's just followed in Trevithic's footsteps to research about the great man. He's written a book about him. Really interesting chat. That's coming up on the show. A steam and organ special tonight. Oh, and because we did a bit of Eurovision earlier, why don't we continue that theme? Mechanical Music Radio's One Second Song. So tonight's Connect Four was all about Eurovision. We played Waterloo and Knock Knock Who's There and Puppet on a String and Euro Papa, the Dutch entrant that uh, sadly never got to perform at the grand final. But moving swiftly on, uh, we've, we've got a One Second Song tonight, which is also Eurovision themed. And maybe I've helped you out a little bit by just listing all of those, because surely there aren't many Eurovision songs on organs left that we haven't played so far on the show tonight. Do you want to have a listen? Here's the one second clip. What Eurovision song is this? I think we'll have no problem there at all. In fact, I'm loath to play the clip again, frankly. If you if you don't know, get, get in touch now, mechanicalmusicradio.com. Send us an email. You can also uh, send us a, a WhatsApp or a text, 07871 221 Double one. That song playing in full before the end of the show. So get in touch now if you know it. Let's see. Let's see if we get any right answers. Text the studio now. 07871 221 511 or email through our website mechanicalmusicradio.com Rollcutter.com is the place to go for organ plans and parts. Peter and Rosemary Hood are proud to announce that they've purchased the J Omega business from Dr. John Whale. J Omega has become the go-to site for MIDI boards, also known as whale boards, for so many of us in the organ world. In order to keep continuity, they're keeping the J Omega website and extending the sales field to include shipping to the USA and Canada. Visit them at rollcutter.com. Tuesday Night Live with James Dundon. Thank you. 
Under the Double Eagle. That was the ex Bernard True Dean, uh, a stable organ of uh, many years of Trivithic Day in Campbell. Uh, an instrument that was there this year is Bocca Rider, a 51 key Van Eyck uh, custodian. Peter Newbury was there, but as usual, Irish Pete not keen speaking on the radio. Luckily, though, we did have uh, someone who is no stranger to uh, lending his dulcet tones to broadcast media, and that is Mr Alan Roberts, who told us a bit about the instrument. This organ was built by Jan van Eyck and company in a town called Terwalder in the Netherlands in 1994. Uh, technically, it's a 51-key Dutch street organ, uh, playing from traditional cardboard books, which can be hand-turned, but it's hard work. <laughs> it is, because you're pumping bellows up and down and pulling the card music through. But it's a lovely example of uh, nice street organ music here on the corner of Bassett Road, and it's pulling a good crowd. It has indeed, yes. Yeah, lots of people coming around the back, lots of interest. We even had a, a, a young lad who's a church organist wanting to know how it worked. Oh, see, that perplexed him. He was like, where's the keyboard? Where's well, the no, console? He, he, he understood it. Yeah. But he understands that you blow down a tube and something happens at the other end. <laughs> Basically, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Music Radio. Thank you. 
My Dutch street organ het blouse has been at Trivithic Day several times over the years. Sadly, these days I get involved in broadcasting on BBC Radio Cornwall whenever the event's on and it's just too much to have an instrument there of my own while doing the outside broadcast. However, there it is playing Spanish Riders March and maybe it will return one day very, very soon when I lose my job. You never know in the world of radio these days. Now... Um, we've we've got this to play you now, and this is a really interesting chat. I caught up with a young guy. He's only 26 years old, and he has followed in the footsteps of Richard Trevithick, the man we're celebrating on the show tonight. Of course, uh, Trevithick was the inventor of the first ever steam locomotive, changed the world forever. His inventions and aspirations took him around the world, though, and young Joel wanted a bit of an adventure. So I started in uh, about a year and a half ago in Chile. I booked a one-way ticket to Santiago and then just worked my, worked my way north uh, to Costa Rica over a course of about eight months. And I've just come back at the start of this year from Peru again. A lot more, re- a lot more focused this time, a lot more uh, organised. And was, so, yeah. it, was it productive? Did you manage to find out um, quite a lot? For the most part, yeah. So this time, I don't know, there was a lot, of, um, a lot of the time I wasn't really sure what I was doing, obviously. It was a bit of a trial by fire a lot of the time. I didn't know what to expect. I wasn't sure what I'd find. And for a lot of the time, I was not. I was looking for chasing shadows, essentially. There wasn't a lot available, a lot of references and stuff. But luckily, especially in Peru. But in Costa Rica, which was my last um, my last of my first trip, um, I found a goldmine, pardon the pun, of the archive there. It, almost everything he did from start to finish in his four years there is in the National Archive of Costa Rica. Because what, what a lot of people don't realise is he's much celebrated today. You know, he is the man that bought us a steam road locomotive. And he had a few failures through his life. He was a sort of a pioneer. He was a real inventor. And not everything went to plan. Not everyone took him seriously because, you know, this was one of the first um, uh, sort of bits of moving transport. It was to replace the horse and car, what he did. But the sad thing is he died a penniless man and no one attended his funeral, according to records. And I find that really, really sad. And even more important that we celebrate him today. I mean, it's a wonderful wonderful day to celebrate him isn't it exactly yeah but that was not necessarily uh, through that. some of that was his own fault I think unfortunately he, um, he was very quite belligerent and forthright and um, a lot of the time he was um, sort of he didn't have the patience to follow through with any of his uh, with any right. of his projects especially in South America even more so he was I found out about he's rejected in modern money about 1.5 million pounds in um, re- um, in remuneration for his projects and mining projects and things like that and one of the quotes was I think he'd rather be thrown down the stairs than accept money from this man Really, something like that, yeah. So he wasn't much of a businessman, but he he had a he certainly had a sort of a intu- intuitive brain about it. Exactly, him. yeah. But none of the patience to follow through with any of these projects. Incredible, really. Yeah, no. I mean, it is. The more you look into his history, well, look. There's obviously many books about the great man out there. What makes your book a little bit different? I suppose because you've been there and researched it, um, followed his footsteps. Indeed, yeah. So if you're not necessarily interested in engineering or steam engines or anything like that, and you're more interested in sort of travel adventures or history and things like that, then my book is a lot more a, a better, uh, perhaps a better introduction to Richard Trevithick and the world of Richard Trevithick. Because I'm not much of an engineer myself. And it was more the uh, his his 11 year adventure through Latin America that interested me more than uh, than yeah the, the history of steam engines and things like that. Brilliant. Good luck with the book, Joel. Yeah. It's available for pre order right now. It's called the Long Road to Nowhere: The Lost Years of Richard Trevithick. If you search for that online, you'll be able to find out more details. 26 year old Joel Griffith, who's written a book about the great man. Uh, look up online for more details. Right before we go. One Second Song. How did you get on? Mechanical Music Radio's One Second Song. Right, so for One Second Song tonight, I gave you the hint that it was a Eurovision classic. It sounded like this. Any ideas? Peter Mackett was fastest finger first. Sasha Cross was second, followed by Andrew Rota, who was a very close third. Well done to Mark and William Raven, who get the correct answer. Also hi to Amanda Liberty, who's dead right. Ashley Liversridge and Diana, Keith Pinner's sister, also correct. 
Also, hi to David Aldridge and Bill Warder among those getting tonight's one second song. And if I played you a bit more... You would suddenly realise it's the Bucks Fizz classic, Making Your Mind Up, and it's the final track of the show. Making your mind up, Bucks Fizz Classic. Hope you enjoy the Eurovision tunes on the show tonight and all the Cornish organs as well as we add a look back at Trevithic Day in Camborne. We're back on track. Very special programme next Tuesday night, the 21st of May. Uh, we are joined by Peter Craig for a celebration of Albert de Cap, a very special anniversary of Albert's achievements and life, and we celebrate his finest arrangements and have many stories about the late arranger that's much admired. So an Albert de Cap special next Tuesday night live. See you then on the 21st of May, next Tuesday night. See you then. So coming up next, uh, all of your requests after 10 o'clock, the variety hour from 11, and of course, band organs and more from midnight tonight. Stay tuned. <laughs> 